Are you guys enjoying your white privilege? <laughs> <laughs> I decided to identify as white because my mortgage was up for refinancing, so I said, okay, I want in on that. Let me get one of those uh, advantageous white privilege rates. Turns out they're all the same rates for everybody. It's, it's, uh, and by the way, um, when white people, when white men were in charge, my mortgage rate was a very reasonable 1%. <laughs> and then we had this female prime minister, I'm just saying, <laughs> with a black chancellor, just saying, <laughs> followed by an Indian prime minister. And now I've been offered the sort of rates and the sort of inflation unprecedented since the time Luftwaffe was pounding London. <laughs> What's up with that? I said this in Piccadilly Circus, London, they laughed less than you did. <laughs> yeah, but um, I think white privilege is real, you know, when you think about it. It opens certain doors to you. Like if you're a white guy and you're not good enough to become a lawyer or a doctor or an engineer, you can always become an orientalist. <laughs> Have you thought about it? You, you, you go to the Orient and you try to decode and uh, decipher their ancient stone engraving. And tell, them, <laughs> tell them they used to be an ancient uh, civilization. They love you for that. <laughs> and if you're not good enough to be an orientalist, you can always go to the Far East as an English teacher. You go to Korea, you go to Vietnam, teaching. You don't even have to be good at English. You don't even have to be English. You can be Polish. You just need to look the part. They, don't, they can't tell the difference. Seriously, I can't do that. I can't do that. So it's... I think white men deserve some privilege because of all the great things they did for us, right? And it just winds me up to see People use the inventions of the white man against the white man. Like they have a go at white men on the internet. Who invented the internet? Yeah. <laughs> white men. <laughs> they have a go at white men on TV or on the radio. Who invented the television or the radio? Or they have a go at white men on, on print media. Who invented the printing machine? And sometimes, the cheek of these anti-white men activists, they march against white men on roads. <laughs> <laughs> Who invented the roads? Why do you think all roads lead to Rome? Why? And they shout slogans against the white men in their megaphones. Who invented the megaphone? You know, Thomas Edison improved it, but the original idea was uh, an English scientist and a German scientist. I mean, shouting slogans against white men in your megaphone, that is like beating up a Japanese guy with a Walkman. <laughs> you know Walkman? Do you remember Walkman? I used to have a Walkman. I know I, I look younger than I am. <laughs> but all of us do, thanks to the white men and all these inventions, medicine and cosmetics they've done to us, all of us look younger, right? And, and the reason these anti-white male activists have so much time on their hands is because of the dishwasher and the washing machine <laughs> and the fridge and all these appliances and comfort, that otherwise so they have time to sit on their bums and think, oh, how oppressed. And they wouldn't have so much free time to think about their oppression if they had to take the laundry to the river. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now they've come up with this idea in America to, to, to defund the, the police to fight white supremacy. I think if you want to fight white supremacy, you must defund schools. Because once you go to school, you learn that white men were better. <laughs> Have you gone to school? <laughs> yeah. I went to school. And by the way, I didn't go to school in a white country. I went to school in Iran. Have you heard about it? Fans of Iran are in tonight? You know, I I Iranians are not really white, but they're also not not white. 
So we spend a lot of time and money on Ancestry.com to figure out what the hell went wrong. <laughs> hey, fun fact, uh, uh, fun fact for you. Do you know why, why, why um, pasteurized milk is called pasteurized? Louis Pasteur. Louis pa oh, some, some people went to good schools. <laughs> Louis Pasteur, a, a French scientist who came with the pasteurization method. Now, I don't want to divide the room about pasteurization. <laughs> I'm doing a gig next month for anti-globalist farmers. <laughs> but pasteurization is very important. Um, Louis Pasteur is so important that, in some countries at least, in Tehran, the Iranian capital, they've named a street after him. And not just any street. It's the street where the presidential palace is located. That's how much they care about the safety of their milk. <laughs> right? But seriously, these, these anti-globalist farmers, uh, they're in Warwickshire next month. And the poster is already out. And the slogan is uh, raw, uncensored, unpasteurized. Above a milk churn picture. So I just need to figure out what their position on pasteurization is because I might have to lose some of my material. <laughs> so you go to Iranian school, day one, day one. They say, welcome, congratulations on making it to the sixth year of your life. No mean feat in Iran. And you've made it to the sixth year of your life thanks to a Scottish scientist who discovered penicillin. And now we are going to study physics, the study of the universe. And every element in the universe was discovered by a white man, as you can clearly see in the periodic table of elements. Even the old ones for which we have no specific discovery. They all have Roman names, like you call iron Fe and you call gold Au. Did you go to school? Yeah, F -E, but the Romans named them, you know? Fun fact for you. Do you know in this country, when you want good luck, you touch wood? Did you know that in Italy they touch iron for good luck? That's because the Romans knew iron before, before the others. That's when you know a civilization is superior. It's when their superstitions are more advanced than yours. <laughs> that was the Romans. They, they, they discovered the metallurgical properties of iron to make swords and shields, and they also discovered the superstitious properties of, of iron. And of course, in physics, we study the, the laws that govern the universe. Right? Like the most important law is gravity. And how do we know about gravity? Because an Englishman was sitting under an apple tree, the apple fell onto his head. The whole humanity had to wait for this guy to be hit with a... Nobody had ever bothered to think about it. He had, I'm sure throughout history, a lot of people have been hit with bananas or coconuts. Okay? Am I right or not? But this guy, that's how good white men are. They discover stuff while napping. <laughs> How good are these guys? How good are Danish people? Danish people, their major export, crime thr thrillers. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's not, it's not, I mean, it's a, it's a homogenous country. Okay, they, they export murder TV series. They don't know what murder is. It's very safe. You know? You know, how good are Danes? Hans Christian Andersen, all the fables, not just reality, they invented our imaginary world. You know, did, did, did you know Disney? All, all Disney catalog is basically Hans Christian Andersen. You think Disney wouldn't want to go with some fables from other continents? They've got nothing. They've got nothing. That's why they have to go with a black mermaid or a, or a Middle Eastern Snow White, because it's all... Hans Christian Andersen, how good are Danes? How good are the French? They invented acting. It's been 70 years since the end of World War, and the French have been consistently acting as if they won it. <laughs> how good are, are these white nations? So, so back to school, after physics, we studied geography, and they say, oh, okay, kids, the world is divided into continents. And the Romans named all of them. Surprise, surprise. 
the Romans were there first, again. I mean, they, they named America because Amerigo Vespucci, an Italian explorer, discovered it. Fair play to him. But while they were at it, they named all other continents as well. And we live in Asia or Asia. Asia is Latin for land of acid attacks. <laughs> That's not very nice of Romans. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. Later, the British arrived and renamed our area. They called us the Middle East. What is mid? Why, why, why is it called Middle East? Did you know? The Foreign Office, the Foreign Office invented that, because Middle East means British possessions in the middle of British possessions in the Far East and British possessions in the Near East. Did you know that? Yeah. So, otherwise, the, the world is round. We are in the middle of nothing, right? East, West is all. But, but the British Foreign Office came up with the terminology. So, so geography is not very flattering if you, if you come from that area. Okay, let's, let's move to history. <laughs> we are an ancient people. Or ev every people is ancient. No people were formed in the 90s. <laughs> but we are an ancient people, and we used to do ancient things in ancient times. As you can see in a these ancient stone engravings, we have no idea what they say. We are waiting for this Western Orientalist to come here <laughs> and, and figure it out. This, this guy couldn't get girls at university. Uh, he's coming here for a dick. Um, but, so that's, that's that. And then we go to contemporary history. Uh, in contemporary history, we are going to teach you uh, Iranian kids how evil the British were. Yeah, you know, the British did terrible things, like, one thing, they went to these countries, some countries, and they imposed their language, so they became English speakers, they became more attractive to foreign investment, and now international corporations want to move their headquarters there, and create jobs and prosperity, damn you, <laughs> how terrible. In our country, they didn't impose their language, because uh, Russians were up there, the Russians wouldn't allow it. But you know what these bastards did in our country? They discovered our oil. We were sitting on the oil we had no idea for centuries. <laughs> this Venetian uh, traveler came, Marco Polo, in the 13th century. He said, oh, what is this sticky thing coming out of rot? Mm -hmm, no idea. Do you want to discover what it is? Marco Polo had no time. He had a dinner date with the Chinese emperor in three years, and he was late. Uh, but Marco wrote about it, and then the British arrived much later. They discovered the oil, and they dug the oil wells, and they put up the oil rigs, and they laid down the oil pipes, and they built the oil tankers, and they invented the engine that would need this oil to run, and when everything was operational, we nationalized it, and we wanted to kick them out. And these bastards wouldn't leave. <laughs> they wanted a return on their investment. Can you believe these guys? <laughs> Can you believe these Brits? Of course, nobody tells about this story. The, 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 the horror that the Brits imposed on the... Have you heard about this story? No. Because as you know, history is written by those who can write. So the British wrote the history. That was the problem. Anyway, that brings us to the end of uh, this school day. And in Iran, at the end of every school day, we have to stand up to listen to the message from His Excellency, the President of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Okay, kids, stand up, respectfully, <laughs> President. Okay, here's the message. You evil uh, Western infidels, we will fight you in Iran, and we will fight you in Iraq, and we will fight you in Yemen, and we will fight you in Lebanon, and we will fight you in Luton, and we will fight you in Bradford, and we will fight you in Paris, and we will fight you in Frankfurt. We shall, we shall march on your decadent cities. Our revenge shall be inexorable. Death to the West. Death to America, death to the West. Please follow me on Twitter. I am at real death to the West. <laughs> and that was a message from the President of the Islamic Republic coming from his offices at Avenue Louis Pasteur. <laughs> because you can certainly not defeat Western armies on the stomach upset by unpasteurized milk. <laughs> That's true. So I think I have 
conclusively proven that uh, white guys are better, and that is based on the Iranian school curriculum, no less. Okay? Um, uh, thank you. you. You've been a great crowd. I must say, I, I, I came to this country uh, 13 years ago to pursue my dream of antagonizing uh, London's hostile liberal crowds. Uh, <laughs> And um, and that's been great. Usually, uh, especially in London, when I when I finish my set, I say you've been a great crowd, and I have been the funniest conservative comedian. Uh, but tonight I can't say that uh, because uh, Alistair Williams is, is coming up next. So you've been a great crowd. I've been the funniest Italian Iranian comic of the night. How about that? Thank you very much.